Hello friends, my name is Ariel Amel and welcome back to some more Gran Turismo 2. Today we're continuing on with our Let's Play, this is episode 67 and in the last episode we finished off all of the one make races for the East City so it's now time to head to our final city to do one make races which is the North City. Now luckily there isn't as many not one make races here as there was in the East City which is pretty good. Also, uh, more good news, we start off with Aston Martin today. Uh, now they only have a one one make race and that is the DB7 trophy for that of course we need a Aston Martin DB7 and uh, well we're gonna go and buy the Volante because I used the coupe in a previous episode of this let's play another reason I want you to use the Volante is because it comes with this cool uh, roof I'm gonna go for it in green though again just because I kind of like the green I was tempted to go for the red but the red doesn't look quite as good as I remember it so there we go that's the car bought. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some tuning to this, so I will see you guys in a second and then we'll get into the racing. Okay, so there we go. That is the tuning done for this particular DB7, running about 530 horsepower. And unfortunately, like the last time I ran this car, I'm having to run a turbocharger. Boo. Anyways, let's head into the first race. There is normal style and racing style races for the DB7 trophy. And of course, we're heading to the normal style race first, which is, of course, on a random course. Let's go. Okay, we have headed to Grindelwald for our first race with the Aston Martin DB7, which is an awfully, awfully wild vehicle, apparently. So anyways, let's see how well we do here. I have upgraded the suspension because if I remember rightly uh, from when I used this car in a previous episode, uh, it had kind of wobbly suspension. Also, there was a hell of a lot of Volantes in this race. There's four Volantes to two Coupes, uh, which is kind of strange. Um, I'm not actually too sure on the statistical differences between the Volante and the Coupe. The Volante does cost about 13,000 uh, credits more. I would imagine it's a bit more weighty. This one isn't because it has weight reduction on it. Um, another reason why I've actually decided to uh, go for the Volante in this particular episode is because... Um, well, the racing mod actually, at least in my opinion, looks a hell of a lot better on the Volante than it does on the standard coupe. Uh, you'll see the racing mod. I'm not a huge fan of the racing mod for the DB7 myself, but it isn't a bad looking... Oh god, it's got five gears, I forgot about this. Also has a pathetically low top speed, I don't know why. I really feel like this thing should be a six speed. Maybe this game's basing it off the automatics, maybe the automatics were five speed? Perhaps, I would imagine so. Um, it's all Jaguar gearboxes, I don't know actually, it could have been a 5 speed manual, I'm not sure, I think I spoke about this before, uh, when I used this vehicle, so, yeah, um, I would assume this is based off the automatic, if anyone's a, sort of knows about the gearboxes in the 7 then please tell me if I'm right or wrong, either way, I think I'm probably going to upgrade that, uh, when I race modify this vehicle, just because it's a little bit irritating, I really do not know why this thing has such a low top speed like I get the five speed gearbox if it's like the auto or whether they did genuinely come with uh, five speeds what I cannot forgive is the fact that this thing can top out at 225 kilometers an hour which to my knowledge is about 140 miles per hour again I would really like to run uh, miles per hour. Unfortunately, uh, you cannot change units in this game. The first game to actually give you control of your units was GT4, surprisingly, and that came out in 2004. Uh, which means, unfortunately, um, should I, hopefully, this is the plan anyway, I'll do Gran Turismo 1, uh, Gran Turismo 3 and Gran Turismo 4 in the future. Um, for 1 and 3, and even GT Concepts actually now that I think of it, uh, you will have to put up with the speedo being in kilometres. I'm sorry, I cannot change it, which is a bit of a shame. I really don't know why. Like, they've managed to change the fact that when you select the English language, voxel comes up, but they can't make it so that when you select English, miles per hour come up. I don't know. Either way, uh, DB7, relatively decent driver. A lot better than I remember it being, that's for certain. And we are, of course, across the line. Now let's see where the rest of the vehicles came. It was, okay, a bit of a mixture, some coupes in there. They came third and last. So apparently the Volante was the car to go with her. Um, I don't really think it makes too much of a difference. I can't imagine uh, GT2 really made it computers to make that much of a difference. Anyways, 
we win 7,000 credits, and I'll see you guys in a second where we're going to racing modify this thing. Okay, right, let's go ahead and race modify our Aston Martin DB7 Volante. Uh, others, racing car modifications, and here you go, here's the race mod for the uh, DB7. As you can see, pretty basic race mod, looks kind of cool. Um, I'm really tempted by the silver, actually. I'm going to go with the green, though, because the green's the right way to have it. Admittedly, I do not like them wheels. They kind of look a bit plastic, if you ask me, but there you go. That's the wheels it's decided to come with. Anyways, I'm also just going to quickly stick the gearbox in here because it's going to irritate me, so let's stick that in. It's only 11 grand on this vehicle, which is kind of surprising. Usually, it's about 20 grand uh, from what I remember. Anyways, there we go. That's all in, and I will see you guys in the next event, which is, of course, racing-style vehicles. Let's go. Okay, so apparently it was a good idea for me to go ahead and upgrade the gearbox because we have headed to test course for our next race with the DB7. May have extended the ratios a little bit too much. Uh, I did dump all the aero off this as well, um, just because because it's got a huge wing on the back of it now. It does come with aero, so I've just dumped all that off. So yeah, hopefully I can get a bit more straight line speed out of this. Uh, apparently, yeah, I've definitely put the gear ratios a bit more up than I thought I would. Um, Fun fact, when you actually select the fully customizable gearbox, the um, initial ratios are extremely close, so that's why um, I kind of compensated for it, because I really thought it was going to give me... Mind you, no, it's still only a 5 speed, so maybe it's not too bad, I guess. Um, admittedly, I've driven vehicles with much longer transmissions than this stock, but it's not too bad. I mean, we're getting up to 307 fifths, basically, a cruising gear. Should probably just leave it in fourth, but either way, we are absolutely blowing the rest of the DB7s out of the water because, of course, they will have uh, restricted gearboxes, or at least they should. Um, <laughs> I know what car did we drive? Was it the Peugeot 106, which ended up coming to test course, and that had like some stupidly long gear ratio? Oh, sorry, it had really good gear ratios, and in the end, all the other vehicles for some reason were managing to uh, keep up with me for some strange reason. Either way, uh, 319 kilometers, I mean that's not bad. 320 kilometers is 180 miles per hour, isn't it? I think. Or it could be 200 actually. Um, I don't really know. I'm uh, somewhat confident in kilometers. I can tell you sort of the basics. I can tell you, you know, 100 kilometers is basically 60 miles per hour uh, and so on and so forth. Once you start getting to sort of the higher end, like 400 kilometers an hour and stuff, I really don't know. Uh, can we hit 320? Yes, we can. So whatever 320 is, we've just hit that. I'm fairly certain that could be 200 miles per hour. I'm fairly certain DB7 in some guys could probably hit near 200. I'm not really sure what top speed were on uh, these particular vehicles. I know they did offer them with uh, V12s eventually, so I can imagine they touched around 180 miles per hour in sort of their stock form, which is pretty cool. Anyways, um, apparently the Coops were the vehicle to go for there because they scored second and fourth, and apparently my uh, the AI that's just taken over my vehicle cannot drive it. So there we go. Anyways, that was uh, test course done and dusted. Overall, I found the DB7 to be a pretty faithful companion on this little trip. A very, very good car, just like the last time I used it. Anyways, I'll see you in a second for the wrap-up. So there we go, that is the DB7 trophy completed. Also, I've just noticed there's a that is a bit wrong in that title. DB7 is just as it's spelt at the bottom of the screen, not as it's put up there. I forgot what you call them things, it's kind of late. Um, but yeah, that shouldn't be there. Anyways, um, that is all the one-make races for Aston Martin complete. In the next episode, we're going to be heading over to Mercedes-Benz to their one-make races. In, um, sorry, um, <laughs> emphasis on the one, because there's only one of them, of course. Anyways, friends, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.